The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me to lie down in, in green pastures and he leads me beside still water. He refreshes my soul. Psalm 23. I learned that when I was a kid. But can we say that is true? That because we have God, we lack nothing. We're in Marfa, Texas, in the middle of nowhere, because I live in a city and I've got four kids and, and there's chaos and, and I forget. I forget that, that God is real and that He matters more than any other thing on earth. I love being in fields and in places that you can actually see the stars. It makes me remember. It helps me to remember who God is and, and what He wants from us. So we're gonna go on a journey. We're gonna go to a desert in Texas that I didn't know existed until a few days ago. And we're gonna see stars and sunsets and, and hear history and see history of a time that, that was slower and simpler. And we're also gonna journey into the life of a man who wrote and lived these famous words in the Psalms. A man who has wrecked me, and he's confused me and, and inspired me and convicted and convicted me. David was a king thousands of years ago who God chose. And David was also this mess of a man, but, but he actually believed that God was real and he lived like it. See, in every one of us, there, there's a space, a chasm that exists and, and, and it feels like something's missing and we all feel it. We all feel that there's a hole and every one of us tries to fill that hole. And maybe you're like me and, and you wanna be comfortable. I wanna be comfortable and I wanna be liked and I wanna be successful and I wanna make a difference and I wanna be respected and I wanna be loved. And these desires, they, they aren't bad until I want those things more than God, which is most hates. When something feels empty, it's, it's pretty natural to wake up every day and wanna fix it. See, we were built to chase something. We were, we were built to chase. We were built to worship. So every day we either wake up and we chase the things that we see or we chase an invisible God. So the reason we're going to study this man is that David was a man who actually filled his soul with God. He was tempted to, to chase everything that we chase and, and sometimes he did run to them, but, but he always recognized it and he ran back to God himself. And, and I don't know that I've seen a lot of examples of this in my life. I don't know that, that I've actually experienced and watch somebody's life completely seeking to fill themselves with God. I know there's, there's moments and days that, that we do fill ourselves with God, but, but to spend our lives chasing God alone. David's son, Solomon writes in Ecclesiastes, I've seen everything under the sun and, and all of it is vanity and a striving after the wind. We are chasing everything under the sun and we can't seem to catch what we're looking for. It's not working. <laughs> it's because we're, we're trying to take wind and make it feel like concrete. See, David was imperfect. He was messed up. Honestly, if he lived today, he'd probably be in in prison, the dude was a wreck, but he was abandoned and single-minded and completely in love with an invisible God. And he lived absolutely surrendered. And as you read the Psalms, you're gonna see a man who actually was satisfied with God alone. In Psalms, David says, my flesh and my heart fail me, but you, God, are the strength of my heart and my portion forever. That sounds good. 
My greatest fear in life is, is facing God one day and realizing that I had chased all the wrong stuff. Later in Ecclesiastes, Solomon says he's chased it all and that none of it has satisfied him. And he says it's because God has put eternity into our hearts. That space that we all feel God put it there for himself. See, the invisible, it's actually supposed to feel more like concrete than wind. I've always been a pretty good girl, but if I'm honest, for a long time, I cared a lot more about appearing like I love God than actually loving him. It's because I was craving people's approval more than I was craving God. And it's messed up, I know it, but I don't think I'm alone. He's this jealous, powerful God, and He wants our complete love. And almost every one of us is chasing something messed up instead of Him. David, he actually loved God Himself. He gave his life to this deep relationship with God. God was David's main pursuit, and, and loving God made for this incredible life. He, he was secure and courageous and humble. And he, and he carried this perspective that this life was going fast and that how he lived this life mattered. See, we chase God and we get something solid instead of wind. And we have to start by being honest. What is it that you're chasing? <laughs>